The 2022 World Championships contained some of the best shots of all time, with players consistently making shots of the highest difficulty at crucial times during the tournament. And despite how challenging it may be, I'm going to find the best shot of the World Championships by recreating the top 14 shots as accurately as possible in the fewest possible attempts, hopefully without getting distracted. All of these shots are going to be tough to play, we don't even have an easy one to start off with, as Tepchire Anu tries to make a clearance against John Higgins. Being the wrong side of the blue, his only chance of manoeuvring the Reds into a potable position was to play a difficult pot on the brown. Not only did he get this, but he managed to finish in position on the red. And I'm looking to do the same, pot the brown and finish nicely on a red. I got the brown on my first attempt, but unfortunately didn't finish in position. The brown is quite a tough pot, and it's made harder by the fact that you need to play it with a bit of backspin and right hand side. On my fourth attempt, I finished nicely on a red into the middle pocket, and this got me in position on the blue. Blue. This may lose out because he didn't win the frame. Shot B. Mark Williams is going to be appearing in this video on multiple occasions. Here he's trying to get back within four frames against Judd Trump in the semi-final. And the fact that he got it at a crucial time is a big reason why this is such a good shot. You need to spin this one around four cushions by playing it with a small amount of stun and left hand side. On the first few attempts I realised quite quickly I was putting far too much left hand side on the cue ball and that's why it ended up in the position near the brown. What I'm looking to do here is get on the green in such a way that it leaves a straightforward pot with an angle that I can stun to the brown. This one just went a little bit too far and you can actually see me waving at the cue ball on my fifth attempt trying to get it to slow down. I've actually got a good angle here but I'm just a long way from the green. My sixth attempt was a lot better. I was still about a foot too far away from the green but I ended up with exactly the right angle to just stun the green in and finish in position on the brown. Shot C. Stuart Bingham's next, trying to pot the red and get the cue ball all the way back into bulk. This one's going to be an early test of my cue power. This one requires a lot of backspin and a well cued shot. Just like Stuart, I'm looking to pot the red and get the cue ball back onto the yellow here. The distance involved, as well as the power you have to play the shot at, made this one really tough. So I was delighted to get it after just two attempts, even if I did cannon the green. And I know the audience would have appreciated it as well if they hadn't have been distracted by something they find even more interesting. Goodness me, hang on. Thankfully, the pigeon escaped unharmed. Ah! Shot D. Judd Trump now playing a shot. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to hit hard enough to get the cue ball all the way around the table. This one needs a lot of right hand side to avoid the blue and because of that it's really difficult to get around the following three cushions and finish back in position on a red. This is partly because it slows the cue ball down, but mostly because my table isn't as fast as what you'd see on TV. And that's why I'm having to throw my entire body at the shot, although this worked out quite well for Judd, as he was able to get into a frame winning position off this shot, even if he did end up losing the frame to Ronnie on a respotted black, but we'll get to that later, because my sixth attempt was just about hard enough. It was about a ball length short, but I was still able to pot a red from here. Shot E. Ronnie seems to have run completely out of position here as the jaw of the pocket is stopping him putting the red down the cushion. However, he still manages to slam the red in the middle pocket. From that position, this was a brilliant pot, although this one may lose marks because he didn't really end up in position again on a colour and ended up missing the pink for the century. I'm looking to stun this in at roughly the same pace as Ronnie did and I was annoyed with my second attempt because I got the pot but didn't finish in position. Although it's hard to say if it really matters because Ronnie didn't finish in position or pot the next ball but I'm still trying to end up in the same place which I sort of managed on my seventh attempt. Shot 
Show F. Nopon Sankam is able to make the cue ball arc really nicely here as he finds a way to cannon the yellow. If I want to manoeuvre the yellow down the cushion like Nopon, I'm going to have to make the cue ball arc around the black. Fortunately, with this angle, that isn't too difficult. With my second attempt, I actually got it. I didn't think I cued the shot well enough, but it was enough to get the yellow down the cushion and leave myself a comfortable pot. Shot G. Mark Williams is playing this exhibition shot on a century break to manoeuvre the red over the pocket and it's really a lot harder than it looks. I'm trying to flick the red onto the same pocket as Mark and that's really not easy because you can simply overhit this shot and the red won't end up anywhere near the pocket. Or you can do what I did on my first attempt and just hit it very fractionally too thin. But even hitting the red isn't easy in the first place. You need to punch the blue in with the correct amount of right hand side and top spin to make the angle around two cushions. And that's a lot harder than it looks. Especially with the pink getting in the way a little bit. It took me longer to get all of these shots than usual and I remember thinking about this shot on one day and actually playing it the next and I think it's either that or the fact that I had to go round the table and take the blue out that made it feel like the shot took longer. This is another shot that will lose marks because it was played after the end of the frame and it was the blue for the century so that doesn't even count. I was really getting close but I couldn't manoeuvre it over the pocket and interestingly on my 10th attempt I didn't think I'd played it well enough but I realised just before I manoeuvred the red back into the right place that I'd left myself just about the right angle to be able to cut the red in. I was happy it went in because I think that's the best I could do. Shot H. Judd Trump in the final with a really tough shot. He manages to pot the red here and screw the cue ball back all the way for the blue. This was a must win frame for Judd so getting shots like these were absolutely critical. However I think he ended up breaking down around about 20 odd and ended up losing the frame anyway. But it's still a good shot even if it didn't give Judd the result he would have wanted. And I was really struggling with this one because I had to play it as hard as I possibly could and that meant throwing my entire body at the shot just to make it screw back far enough. And when I finally potted the shot on my 8th attempt I realised I hadn't really got as far through the cue ball as I could have so I kept trying to get the cue ball further back onto the blue. This is similar to the Stuart Bingham shot we looked at earlier. You don't have to pull the cue ball back as far but the red's further away. I knew if I hit it perfectly I could just about get on the blue and on my 16th attempt I hit it about as well as I could and nearly ended up straight. But what was harder, this shot or the Stuart Bingham one from earlier? Stuart managed to screw the cue ball all the way back into bolt for which he receives three lightning bolts but Judd's shot came at a more crucial time and I think it was a harder shot for which he receives five lightning bolts and he's this week's winner. Shot I. It's Ronnie again early on in the final and he manages to find a way to win a crucial frame on a respotted black. Remember when I said Judd hadn't taken full advantage of a clearance when he slammed the pink around the table? Well this is what ended up happening. The frame went to a respot and Ronnie managed to get it in the middle pocket with a cocked hat double. I'm not entirely sure if he played it because this shot is very dangerous if it goes wrong and if you notice every time I miss it here if you ignore the stupid ones where I manage to go in off I leave the pot on. I was getting pretty annoyed with this one because I was having real trouble hitting it anywhere near the pocket on most shots so when my 8th shot went in I didn't really care the cue ball was in the wrong place. Shot J. This next shot from Judd is a match winner against Anthony McGill. An overlooked shot I believe because it's deceptively hard. From this angle it looks like the yellow's more or less over the pocket. But when you actually get behind the shot it looks very thin down the cushion. You have to play this with quite a lot of left hand side and a small amount of backspin to get the cue ball to bounce off the second cushion really close to the middle pocket and move back across the table with the right pace for the green. 
I was really struggling even to get the pot on this one, so when I got it on my fifth attempt, I was happy to get on the green, but I couldn't get onto it in the right pocket because it turns out it isn't possible on my table. I was spinning the cue ball to here, as close as I could get to the middle pocket, but unfortunately a combination of side spin and the thicker cloth on my table means the cue ball rolls to the right, so I can never actually get on the green. Well, I can't work under these conditions. Shot K. Unfortunately, because I'm not left-handed, I'm going to have to use the rest for this brilliant Zhao Zingtong snooker, and that's just going to make it even harder. Oh, what a shot he's played there. So I'm looking to get the snooker in behind the black here, which is going to require a slow shot played with a lot of backspin, and it requires a lot of finesse, which is hard to do when you're playing a rest shot. A lot of you have suggested before that when I play a left-hander shot, I should just manoeuvre the balls to the opposite side of the table and mirror the clips so I can play it right-handed and it looks like I'm playing the shot left-handed. And after about five attempts, I really wished I'd done this after I got really close to getting in behind the black, but just not quite there. It was really difficult to both avoid the double kiss and still hold the cue ball close enough to the top cushion to keep it in behind the black. Stephen Maguire hit the blue and Zhao lost the frame, so when I got the cue ball just about in behind the black, I was pretty happy, even if it did leave an easy one cushion escape. After we find Yulian from Kharkiv, Ukraine, which is there, we've got another Mark Williams shot, which is shot L. In the early rounds, Mark Williams looked absolutely untouchable as he breezed past Michael White and Jackson Page. This was a nice shot from Mark to keep the break going and he eventually won the frame from this. I thought this was going to be a little bit harder than it was but I was still pretty happy to get it after just one attempt even though it was a little bit simplistic. Shot M. Another Ronnie O'Sullivan shot now, and this one allowed him to go on and win a crucial frame. Ronnie spins the cue ball around two cushions here, and he isn't intending to get the cannon on the black, but the black still goes after this, and he manages to pot it, get the clearance, and win the frame on a respot. I was just looking to get the cue ball in position, but on my second attempt, I actually managed to get the cannon as well, which I wasn't expecting, so it was fairly good in the end. Next up is a really tough Matthew Stevens shot after we find Regia from Tripoli, Libya, which is there. You can tell by the time we got this far down the alphabet and shot N with Matthew Stevens that I'd lost all interest in getting the letters right, but what I can't afford to do is lose interest in this shot because it's ridiculously difficult. This is such a difficult shot that on my first attempt I accidentally played the yellow round three cushions as a cocked act double and potted it in the middle pocket. If only I could have done that earlier. This took so long that I had to speed some of the clips up because otherwise we've been here for about another half an hour. I'm not sure how much Matthew Stevens played the shot like this but Jack Lazowski ended up missing it in the end and hitting the black. This left Matthew in a position where he could win the frame again, but he didn't end up going on to win it after he left the brown over the pocket and ended up losing the match in the end. Even though this was one of the best laid snookers of the week, I think we can agree this ended up just being a ridiculously difficult shot that didn't really help anybody. But I still had to get it, and after 21 attempts I still hadn't really got close. Even the ones that looked like they were going in behind the pink and black didn't all way too hard. By this point I got the pace about right, and it wasn't until my 34th attempt that I actually managed to get the angle right. I was pretty happy with this shot in the end, even if the cue ball didn't end up in the right place. I'm sure nobody would have escaped from this snooker. Usually this is the part of the video where I pick the best three shots, but because this is the World Championships, I'm allowing you to vote for your favourites. 
If you head down to the description, you can follow the link. I really hope I don't end up regretting this decision and find out I have to announce that the best shot is somebody potting a black off the spot, but I'm sure you'll get it right because we're looking for the sort of shot that will set the world on fire. I've pretty much recreated the best shots from every tournament this season, so if you want to see some of that, then have a look at these two videos. And remember, don't just watch, play, and make the commitment to becoming a better player by subscribing to the channel, and visit the website. See you later!